And now to our interview with House Speaker Nancy Pelosi. I spoke with her this afternoon at the Capitol. Madam Speaker, welcome. My pleasure. Welcome to the Capitol. Well, thank you. Do you see the way you did health care reform as a model for enacting major legislation? I see the way we did health care reform as a model of getting something done for the American people. Uh, it is, uh, we reach for bipartisanship, we try to find common ground. But if we can't, it doesn't mean we don't go forward. It's urgent for the American people in terms of their personal health, their personal finances. It's urgent for the, the American people in general as taxpayers uh, because we'll save $1.3 trillion as we improve quality, lower cost, expand access, and hold the insurance companies accountable. But the bottom line was you have a very thin vote margin, uh, no Republican votes, and a sharply divided public, and you still did it. Right. Well, that's a tribute to my colleagues that they had the courage of their convictions, that they believed that this was an historic opportunity to do something great sitting right up there with Social Security, Medicare, the Civil Rights Act, health care for all Americans. And again, the president tried for one solid year from March of last year with his first summit at the White House until this summit he had this year to enlist the Republicans to put forth their ideas. But I think what emerged was is that the Republicans just will not regulate the insurance companies and the Democrats will, and that was the major difference. And if you can't come to terms on that, then you just have to decide whether to proceed or not. We decided to proceed. You uh, said a few days uh, ago, quote, if the gate is closed, we will go over the, f over the fence. If the fence is too high, we will pull vault in. <laughs> if that doesn't work, we will parachute in, but we are going to get health care reform passed. Is that kind of a definition of what you'd call the Pelosi way to operate? <laughs> well, none the, the, the point is uh, I knew that my, I had faith in my colleagues that we would get this job done. But in case you're wondering, we went through the gate. All mm. of us together pushed that gate open for the American people. And now we have health care with innovation, with wellness and, and prevention about uh, the, the using new technologies and more investments in science to make America healthier. It's not just about health care. It's about health, good health for the American people. Are you concerned at all about the uh, historic uh, record for these kinds of sweeping pieces of legislation? For instance, Social Security creation, mm -hmm. Medicare creation, civil rights legislation. All of those passed by considerable margins and in a bipartisan, with bipartisan support. And, but health care, no. Not a problem? Well, let's review the history. Let's go back to Medicare. It's the most recent example. Uh, Medicare uh, was not, didn't have the strong bipartisan vote on the vote that really mattered. This is inside baseball, but the motion mm -hmm. to recommit, is always, that's when the uh, Republicans have their chance to change the bill. The Republican motion to recommit on Medicare was to gut Medicare, and only about a dozen or a few more Republicans voted to support Medicare. One final passage after that was resolved, yes, many more Republicans joined in. But the fact is the fight was over whether Medicare would be what it, you know, what it set out to be. And so uh, that, it wasn't as bipartisan as, uh, as others are describing now. It was a very tough fight. I have the voting sheets mm -hmm. from Medicare. I see it every step of the way. And it was instructive to me. What's your own analysis of why uh, the Congress is so sharply divided by party right now. Well, we have differences of opinion. Such has always been the case in our history, starting from the second term of George Washington. The states' rights, federals, different points of view have always been uh, uh, competitive, and that's what I found is intended. This is the marketplace of ideas, where people bring their ideas, they ar debate, argue, compete, and someone prevails. Uh, uh, the, um, unfortunately, now, when we're trying to make this real change on health care reform, and some people are still very unhappy about the results of the last election, and we have uh, joblessness in our country that we are continuing to address, you have a combination of forces uh, that uh, are fertile for some of the fear-mongering that is going on. But the fact is, is that we're on a path 
This is this bill, this health care bill, is a jobs bill. It will create four million jobs. It's part of the president's fuller agenda in his budget to lower taxes, reduce the deficit, and to grow the economy in a stabilized way uh, around three pillars, investments in education, health care, energy, climate change. Two of those pillars are addressed in this legislation. It's about change. It's about something fresh and new. And it's about saying to the special interest uh, insurance companies, no longer will you be come between patients and their doctors. No longer will the American people have to play on your turf. It's time for you to play on the turf of the American people. So again, depending on what your view of is the role of government, you exploit uh, your point of view, and the Republicans have exploited the position of the insurance companies and been very effective in, in hijacking some of the legitimate concerns of the American people against this legislation. But I feel very confident the more people know about the legislation, and that's already coming forth. The polls have definitely made a swing in terms of uh, uh, supporting the legislation. So you do not believe, or do you believe, that under underline all of this is a basic of this division between Republicans and Democrats right now. Is it basic division over philosophy, over political philosophy? I do. You I do. do. I think uh, to give the Republicans credit, they vote what they believe, and they do not believe in regulating the insurance companies. And that's what it's about the insurance companies. I believe that. It doesn't go any deeper than that. Well, it's about regulating insurance companies and the role of government in doing so. Uh, they opposed, by and large, Medicare. Uh, even to this day, you know, talk about the vote at mm -hmm. the time, uh, in, in the course of the, uh, the debate in the last decade, the Republicans have said Medicare is, uh, should wither on the vine, wither on the vine. Take it right up to real time right now. The Republican budget is to privatize Social Security, to give a voucher for Medicare, give a voucher to seniors and have them um, be left to their own uh, resources as they go out to the marketplace and to a uh, block grant Medicaid, which is the beginning of the end of Medicaid. So this isn't even historic. This is current. This is their budget. This is a big difference between Democrats and Republicans. You talk about governing. Uh, essentially, what we have now is not correct it to say that we have uh, one-party government. Are you comfortable with that? Well, we, we again reach out for bipartisanship. No one has been more of a um, advocate for bipartisanship than the President of the United States. For one solid year, from the start of his, uh, from his inauguration until just a few weeks ago on this subject of health care, he has tried to get, to listen, to incorporate ideas. And let me say this, this legislation may not have bipartisan support, but it has bipartisan imprint. There are over 200 amendments between the House and the Senate that the Republicans advanced that are in this legislation. So uh, the, the, the fact that before the president even went to see the Republicans in the House when he became president, they said whatever he asked for, the answer is no. So again, you, that we, you, let, bipartisanship is, is, a, uh, is a wonderful way if we, if we can achieve it. And we have won many, many, many pieces of legislation. On this particular issue, we do not. But that doesn't mean we shouldn't have it. Bipartisanship is not more important than a little child who is sick being deprived of coverage because he's a pre-existing condition. It's not more important that women can stop being, uh, uh, just being a woman is no longer a uh, pre-existing medical condition. Uh, that, that if you lose your job, you lose your insurance. That if you want to start a business or be self-employed or change jobs, you're not job locked that the insurance companies don't have it over your head, that they can insurance increase your rates and you're at their mercy. That's more important than getting a few Republican votes, although the president stroke, it was stroke, tried very hard to do so, and I respect that. Speaking of picking up on your line, losing uh, your job, uh, I spent the, how do you feel about the suggestion that this vote on health care reform could lead to the loss of the majority in the House of Representatives, and thus you're losing your position as Speaker of the House. I've said if, if passing this bill means I have to walk out of my office that night, it would be with the greatest pride. But I don't have any intention of losing the Democratic majority. It's too important to the country. It's too important to the lives of the American people. We are there for them. 
And the president has said, we will measure our success by the progress being made in Amer for America's working families. Uh, I believe that this is what we came here to do. We didn't come here to self-perpetuate ourselves in office. We came here to make a difference in the public's life. Now we have to go out there and, and tell people what is in the legislation. I have confidence that my members can do that. And again, I wear two hats uh, by day, a Speaker of the House, and uh, uh, by evening making sure that we have a strong Democratic majority. The person who would replace you as Speaker if uh, it did become Republican, John Boehner, said this finally about you. He said, talk about what a strong House Speaker you are. And then he said, quote, so you pass a very unpopular bill, you shove it down the throats of the American people, and you lose your majority. How good is that? How smart is that? What is smart is to do what the American people need. This is historic. President Obama has done what other presidents over 100 years uh, did not succeed in doing, although they all recognized that it was important. So this is, uh, this is about st striving to find your common ground. That's our responsibility. But if you don't find it, you must stand your ground for the American people. And good policy, we hope, will be good politics. But we did what we came to do. We are public servants. We have it inside of us to do the right thing for the American people. And that's what, why I always had confidence that we would pass this historic legislation to make progress for the American people. Madam Speaker, thank you very much. Thank you. My pleasure.